Hi guys, Anthony here for The Hot End. In this episode, we're going to review the Cyclop 3D Scanner by GearBest. Okay, so GearBest were nice enough to send over one of these kits. The scanner kit itself comes boxed nice and neatly as I'll show you with some overlay pictures shortly. Uh, it currently retails for $115.99 US but that's on a 25% discount flash sale. Uh, and at the end of the video I'll put in a discount code to get it for about $109. So the way the scanner works is you've got two lasers on either side and then the camera in the middle. So the one eye being the cyclop and a rotating turntable controlled by a stepper. The stepper motor is mounted underneath the turntable and then the wires go into the Arduino Uno which is then controlling the two lasers in either corner of these points. The camera itself connects straight through to your PC as normal and it uses the Horus or Horus software to uh, do its calibration. So I'll show you the uh, the horror software now and do a calibration routine so you can see how it works. So inside Horus this is the um, calibration capture. So these overlay lines are that the camera sees the red, uh, sees the black and the white checker boxes and it has its orientation and a grid. So it's got a grid lock. So if we move over to the calibration workbench, we can do the scanner auto check. And what this is going to do is just to make sure that it can see all of the checker points on the calibration card, which comes with the kit. And I'll run that now for you. So basically what this is going to do is bring it in on an angle and then find out at what point can it get a lock. So it's got its lock and uh, I'm not sure if you can see that but it says scanner configured correctly. After we've done the auto check we do the laser triangulation and that's going to ensure that both of the lasers are correctly centered onto the right target. So to do that we click start And now this is going to bring it in until it gets a lock and then it's going to fire up the lasers and then determine uh, how parallel the lasers are with each other. So you can see the lasers are kicking in now. And that's just going to do a scan of the, um, the pattern calibration card just to know exactly how parallel these lasers are against each other. So when you go to do an actual scan it can align both of the images correctly. If you don't do this step properly then both of the uh, images that it scans, because it's basically scanning two images at the same time, um, they'll be out of alignment and you'll have a scan within a scan so they won't be a perfect circle. One, one will be bigger than the other. Okay so that's nearly finished and here is the results. So it has worked out all those lasers are pretty good and that's their orientation. So down the bottom we just accept those values and that's going to plumb that into the um, software so it can work out the correct difference. Alrighty so we'll run this calibration now And this one's going to work out the rotation matrix and then um, again that'll be allow uh, for greater precision when it's doing the scanning and then aligning both lasers. So as you can see straight away it's got a lock. Those different colored lines indicate that it's locked on to the differentiation between the, the uh, white and the black. It doesn't take too long to align.
If you see the colour fading off like that, it's because I've only got one light in from the side, which is not ideal. If you're going to be doing this properly, then you need, ideally, you need a, um, a diffused constant light of all angles. So you want, a, you want a, a light that doesn't create any hot spots, you just need a nice, even, diffused light. Okay, so the platform is now calibrated correctly. It knows where it is, it knows where the platform is, and its rotation. So we'll, again, we'll accept those values. And then on to video settings. This is where you can um, so rotate the video around, or if you've got your camera in the wrong way, you can flip it around. So if you've got your camera upside down, you can flip it and you can change the width and the height of the image. Um, I'm pretty sure this is about as big as we can go. I'll try something big here. Camera does not accept this, use the nearest. Yep, so 1280 by 960 is the biggest that it will do. Now this one I haven't needed to play with but um, basically what this one does is you move the card manually and then hit spacebar. It'll take a series of images and then work out how far away they are from each other. So I'll start this one off. I'll just press spacebar. It's captured an image. Now as long as these lines, with my finger out of the way, have a lock, then it'll let you take a photo. And again, that will outlay, that will put it on a, a graph to show you where the position of the uh, card was at all times. So you can see we didn't move it up or down or anything. We've just moved it around by moving the platform. And we'll accept those values. Next, we can move on to uh, the adjustments. And in here, you can adjust your color and brightness so that the image that you're going to capture has the best chance for success. Here is where it uses the values for the scan. So again, we just want to get the object that we're trying to scan in a good scannable quality picture that the camera can detect. So if we can see it nicely, the camera will be able to see it nicely. Okay, that looks pretty good. Now we can move on to the scanning workbench and we get it aligned. So we just move it around until we're aligned. And I reckon there is pretty good. Okay, from there we can choose if we want to use right laser, left laser or both. I'll leave it on both. Rotating platform, this is the amount of degrees step it's going to do. So what I do is for the first uh, almost like test scan, I leave it at a really high number. So it's going to do a really crappy picture, but we're going to know if there's any dodgy spots. And then the speeds you shouldn't need to touch. The ROI is uh, you can create a like a barrier around the object and it will ignore everything else just to eliminate some extra variables in background. Okay, so as you can see, I might make that a bit wider in case it curves a bit on the corners. Now everything that's black, it's going to ignore. So here we can now hit play, which will do the start the scan.
So the build experience itself was pretty sim simple and self-explanatory with the video on their website. It was literally just some bolts and nuts and um, there wasn't too much involved. Uh, half an hour if you just sit down and do it you'll be fine. Again the coupon codes for the scanner will be in the description below and that will get it to you for $109.99 US. For that kind of money it's worth it just for the experience to play with and something different that you haven't tried before. Now as I might have mentioned previously the output that it gives you is a point cloud or a point mesh and you need to use other software to convert this into a printable file. Um, I use MeshLab or another one called Cloud Compare. I'll put links to the manual of both of these in the description so if you do get one of these you're not stuck left high and dry. You then convert it into a solid mesh with that, pop it into Mesh Mixer or Simplify 3D or whatever and then you're good to go. I quite like this because I hadn't seen anybody else do this and uh, it is something different. Now 3D scanning and printing go hand in hand together so if you can nail the two you should be good to go. So thank you very much to Gearbest for sending this over to review. I quite like it. It has its purpose, it has its uses. And as you'll see from some of the outputs that I've scanned, it is quite a capable scanner if you take the time to calibrate it and get your lighting correct. I'll uh, see you on the next video.